<clears throat> Alright, what's up guys? So, I don't know if anybody's going to be on this live thing, but I'm going to do a, uh, pretty much just a live test taking strategy. And this was, I thought about this yesterday after doing, um, <clears throat> after doing some uh, thinking from my last live broadcast where I had a bunch of ideas, but I had a lot of people asking questions. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put these up here and then I'll leave this live broadcast up like last time so we can at least go over all this stuff together. And then if you have any questions after I'm done with my lecture, then you can uh, put the uh, questions up. But basically what I was doing was I was thinking from the lab, we had so many live, uh, I mean so many questions last time I couldn't get to everything I wanted to do. So basically I just said I will think about this and come up with a game plan and leave this live broadcast up for you guys so you can kind of watch over it. So we'll get into that right now. So with test taking strategies, the very first point, when you first get your test, the very, very first thing I want you to do is I want you to look over the test, okay, and highlight every select all that apply question. So everything that's select all that apply, right when you get that test, right when you get that test in your hand, look at it. If it's a 60 question test, look at the whole thing. And then you can say, okay, I want you to go ahead and circle every select all that apply questions. That way, the best thing about that is once you get the select all that apply questions circled over, you won't, it's easier because you won't skip over it. You know, there's a couple times in, in class when I was going over my select all that apply, when I was taking the test, I was select all that apply questions that I would actually not even think about it or I would look over it. So the very first thing I want you to do is circle all the select all that apply questions. And then I also want you to highlight all of the questions that say not. So the, the main two points about this is when you, when you circle all the select all that apply questions and every question that says not, that way you know when you come to that question, if you get going in your test, that you don't overlook that question. Because that's one of the biggest things. There was a couple times in nurse school that I looked over any question that said not and thought they were actually asking a different question. So it's important that you circle that right there, not in the select all that apply, because then you just don't overlook them. And you know, it's, it's funny because, I mean, there was multiple times when I was in nursing school that just absolutely, I looked over questions and I looked over stuff just because I didn't know what it was asking. So that way you've automatically highlighted your select all that apply and you've automatically highlighted all the questions that ask not. Okay, so now we're going to get into actual how to take the an actual multiple, uh, multiple choice question test and what are some strategies that you can use that will help you um, try to understand what the question is. Like one of the biggest things is nursing instructors, and trust me, I know this, nursing instructors will get a question and they will, they will actually modify that test. They'll know the answer, but they'll modify it themselves to try and trick you. They do that on purpose. They try and trick you because they want to, they want to test your critical thinking skills. And so the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is understand the best thing is no problem. It'll be up too for after I'll post it afterwards. So the, the best thing you can do is know who they're talking about and what is the situation? Because if you don't know what they're asking, or if you don't know what the situation is, it's hard to understand what the question is. So 
one of the good things is first knowing your instructor, knowing how your instructor gives tests. Everybody knows if you have multiple instructors, there's always that one instructor that is just notorious for making hard tests. So if you can get that, when you get your test and you look at the multiple question, when you know the situation and you know who they're talking about, then I want you to look for certain keywords. Okay, look for the keywords such as what is this asking for? Um, you'll see keywords like not, that's another one. Like you want to make sure that you're understanding the question. Multiple times I went through the through nursing school and I didn't understand the question. So look for keywords that can help you understand what the question is asking and what the situation is. And then after you've done that, I want you to immediately eliminate the wrong answer. The, the answers that you know are absolutely wrong. If you have four uh, choices, you know automatically that two of those are going to be kind of weird, maybe, maybe, and then there's going to be two that are, um, and then there's going to be two questions that are absolutely wrong, no matter what. I want you to go ahead and just eliminate those. That way, you've narrowed it down to two questions, and I mean two answers, and then that way you can you can at least you have a 50-50 chance. I mean, but when you really, really look at it, there's going to be something that stands out to you. Every question and every answer, that answer is going to be right there. It's not going to be, but you have to know what your instructor is asking you because they're going to modify it their way. And what instructors usually do is they'll get a, they'll get a basically a test bank. And out of that test bank, what they do is they modify these questions and they do that so people can't cheat and download test banks online and do all this other stuff. So they'll modify the question. So it's, it's important to know how your instructor tests. That's probably the biggest part of it. So what I'll do right now is I just went through this. You can, you guys can watch it on the replay is I'll actually go through some, I have my book here and I'll go through some questions and we'll talk about if you have any questions after or whatever, email me or put a message up or whatever. So right now we're going to get into some actual questions. So first, the first question we're going to start out with is a select all that apply. And I like doing these because it kind of gets the student into any student that I ever tutor. I like starting out with select all that apply questions and because it just gets their mind really, really focused and really, really, really ready to go. So let's get into the, uh, to the first question. So the question is, a nurse is screening a client for hypertension. No, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to answer the, the questions. What I'll do is I will just ask them because I'm going to leave this up on the replay and, um, but I'll, I'll answer the actual question questions on here. And then when you re when you go back through the replay, you can you can kind of pick out, you know, fast forward or pick out the questions you want. But um, you don't have to. But after I go through these questions, if you want to stay on or come back later, and you have any questions, just ask me because I'll be on for like a, I'll be on for thirty minutes, an hour or something. So, starting out with the select all that apply. So a nurse is screening a client for hypertension. Which of the following actions? by the client increases his risk for hypertension. And this is a select all that apply. So we got A, drinking eight ounces of non-fat milk daily. B, eating popcorn at the movie theater. C, walking one mile daily at a 12 minute pace. D, consuming 36 ounces of beer daily. Or E, getting a massage once a week. So that's a select all that apply question. And if you, if you look back over it, drinking eight ounces of, of non-fat milk daily is not going to increase the risk of hypertension. Eating popcorn at a movie theater will because of the butter, the salt. So we're going to say B, C, walking one mile daily at a 12 mile pace. That's not going to be it. C, con 
consuming 36 ounces of beer daily. And we know that's going to be it. And then E, getting massage once a week is not going to do it. So the question, the, the answers are B and D. And the reasoning that is, is because consuming a lot of times with beer acts as a diuretic or alcohol acts, acts as a diuretic initially. So what can happen is it'll drop your blood pressure at first. The first 12 ounces to 24 ounces will drop your blood pressure. But then after that, it kind of has a rebound effect. And what that does is it brings that blood pressure back up. So we're going to go with B and D. And right there, what I did with that, guys, if you look back, go back to that question, is I eliminated um, A because I knew drink, drinking eight ounces of non-fat milk daily is actually recommended. So that's not bad. Walking a mile, 12 minute mile pace, anytime you walk, that's not gonna hurt anything if you're talking about hypertension and then getting massage. So those three are automatically out. The other, the other two, popcorn and beer were pretty obvious. So that's a pretty easy question, but that's how you wanna approach a select all that apply. And I think one of the students last live stream said something about, um, Basically, you look at a select all that apply as a true and false type of question, each individually. So that's a good way to look at it. So let's go over another question. A, uh, <clears throat> here's a good teaching question. And remember, guys, always nurses are always teaching as part of the nursing process. So make sure you're always t talking about teaching and discharge planning and all this stuff. So we'll get into this next question. Number three, or we'll just get it. A nurse is providing discharge teaching for a client who has a prescription of Lasix, 40 milligrams PO daily. What time of the day should the nurse encourage the client to take his medication? A, in the morning. B, immediately after lunch. C, immediately after, before dinner. Or D, at bedtime. Now, guys, this is a perfect question for what I said earlier about the test taking, test taking strategies. We know for a fact that Lasix makes you lose fluid. Lasix makes you pee a lot. So we definitely know that D is not going to be the answer. Bedtime is not going to be the answer. You don't want to teach your client. You don't want to tell them to take that Lasix when they're laying down in the bed. Okay, so... The other three, we've eliminated that one. The other three answers are the morning, immediately after lunch, or immediately before dinner. So the other one I'm gonna eliminate is immediately before dinner. And, and, the, and the, reason I'm, I mean, the reason I'm saying that is because if you, you don't wanna have them about to sit down to dinner and have to go to the bathroom a lot. So you have two, two other answers here that are gonna be possibly right. You have in the morning or immediately after lunch. And so those can both go either way. You're like, well, should I tell them to take it after lunch after they had their dinner or should it be in the morning? So you're gonna pick, it's gonna be A, which is gonna be in the morning. And the reasoning that is, is because you don't want to, you want to, you want to get that, that peak time when they're up and they're moving around, not when they're after they've eaten any time or before they've eaten because they're just going to be lazy. They're going to sit there. So that's a good one of eliminating two answers immediately. All right, let's go to another question. Let's go to a harder question. So a nurse, urgent care clinic. Okay, here's a really good one too. Okay, so a nurse is in an urgent care clinic obtaining history from a client who has type 2 diabetes and a recent diagnosis of hypertension. This is the second time in two weeks that this client has experienced hypoglycemia. Which of the following data should the nurse report to the provider? A, takes Metamucil daily, 
B, drinks skim milk daily. C, takes metapro metaprolol, low presser, daily. Or D, drinks grapefruit juice daily. So, let's think about what this question was asking. So, the nurse is taking care of a client. So, we know it's a client with type 2 diabetes. Has a recent diagnosis of hypertension. And the main thing, it was letting us know that the second time in two weeks that the client has experienced hypoglycemia. So if we look at immediately, we're going to say, A, Metamucil is not going to have anything to do with that. We can eliminate that one. Then we can look at D, drinks grapefruit juice daily. That actually increases glucose, so that's not going to cause hypoglycemia. And drink skim milk daily, that's going to increase the blood sugar. So we got three answers, as a matter of fact, that are just totally not even, not even relevant. So it's going to be the metaprolol daily. And the low pressure can mask the effects of hypoglycemia, especially because it drops the blood pressure immediately. Or not immediately, over time. And we always need to report that. Majority of the time, you're always going to report any kind of uh, beta blocker stuff like that. That's always going to be reported to the provider because, I mean, that's just so important, but especially in this case. But we could uh, immediately eliminate two. If the patient's having hypoglycemia, we have drink skim milk daily. We know that's going to raise uh, blood sugar and grapefruit juice. That's going to raise blood sugar. So that's two right there that we've automatically eliminated right away so that's uh that's another good example of eliminating the wrong answers immediately all right guys so i'll do one more question here Okay, so a nurse is caring for a client who has a new diagnosis of hypertension and a new prescription for aldoctone, 20, 25 milligrams a day. Which of the following statements by the client indicates a need for further teaching? So this is a really good one because it can, we can go through the whole process here. So who is that, who, who and what is the situation? So we're talking about the client with newly diagnosed hypertension, okay? What of the following statements indicates a, a client needs further teaching? So right there we know that the, the client is thinking wrong and needs to, be, uh, needs to be educated on this subject. So, is it gonna be A, I should eat lots of fruits and vegetables, especially banana, bananas and potatoes? B, I will report any changes in a heart rate or rhythm. C, I should use a salt substitute that is low in potassium. D, I will continue to take this medication even if I'm feeling better. All right, that's kind of a, that's a, uh, that's a tricky one, guys, if you really listen to the question. So, first you got to know that spironolactone, aldoctone, is a, potassium sparing diuretic means that it's going to keep the potassium in your body all right anytime you see that spironolactone you need to kind of keep that in your mind okay always think about potassium and what can affect potassium so but if you get a potassium wasting diuretic that doesn't hold the potassium so these questions can can kind of get confusing but we know one thing that's going to keep potassium high, and that's going to be potatoes, vegetables, and bananas. All right? So, I mean, I already know the answer is A here, but we'll go, to, we'll go through some other of this. All right? So, the, if the client needs further teaching, so that means the client is, is stupid, doesn't know what they're talking about. 
So B, I will report any changes in heart rate or rhythm. That's a good answer. That's the client knows we're talking about because we need to know that, especially when you're talking about potassium. It can affect the heart rate. Um, C, I should use a salt substitute that is low in potassium. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great, a great answer. And D, I will continue to take this medication even if I'm feeling better. So right there, we've eliminated B and C, and we have A and D left over. So if we have A and D, so D is, it's kind of confusing because that's always like one of those answers that seems like it's always right. I will continue to take this medication even if I'm feeling better. Yeah, that's true. But A is the more appropriate when you're thinking of, you're thinking of that critical thinking. What is the most likely to kill my patient? Well, that's not going to happen, but with, with, if they're just taking the medication, but if you have a potassium sparing di diuretic and you're, and that potassium staying in the body and you start eating bananas, potatoes and vegetables that are high potassium, you're going to get that, that hyperkalemia. You're going to get that high potassium. Then you're going to have heart issues. You're going to have heart murmurs. You're going to have all this other stuff. So again, talking about that critical thinking, when you're thinking, what is going to kill my patient first? While D is correct that, yeah, I'll continue taking this medicine even if I feel better, but it's not necessarily the the best answer and plus it's the right answer anyway so the patient doesn't need further teaching on that so always remember guys with spironolactone that you're going to be talking about potassium something to do with potassium so if you if you're holding your potassium in you definitely don't want to eat any more fruits and vegetables all right guys so i've went on for about 22 minutes here so I know there's only two of you guys on right now. So if y'all have any questions, uh, shoot away. If not, I'll um, get off and y'all can rewatch the video and maybe pull some little gems out of it or something. Oh, you're welcome. Hopefully it helps. I think that's really, I thought about it after yesterday, after we got, or the other day when we got done with the live broadcast, I was like, well, I was like, I need to explain it a little bit more and maybe I can uh, break it down a little bit better. So thought about throwing some of those strategies and, and the first part of the video is pretty good. So hopefully you guys, um, you know, can get something out of it. All right, guys. Well, if y'all have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, Hit me up on Instagram I, or any message, any way y'all can email me, Instagram me. It doesn't matter. I usually answer. So if y'all have any any nursing school questions, just hit me up. I'll be glad to ask them. <laughs> Bye.